Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use an EQ here in Studio One. Let's take a look. Typically, when you hear the phrase EQ something, it means you want to affect, you want to filter and work with certain frequency bands in the audio. All audio, especially melodic audio, has a certain tonality to it, and that's frequencies. So an EQ is a processor that you can put in line. I'll show you how to do that right now. I've got my solo uh, acoustic guitar here soloed. I want to thank our friends at Pearl Sound Studios in Detroit for these amazing tracks. Ain't we the lucky ones? Check it out. Okay, so we've got a beautifully recorded acoustic guitar. What I'm going to do now here is included with your in your PreSonus bundle, you may have the Pro Q here FX. Now there are some presets you can start with, but I want to start with a default. I'm going to select it and put it right in my track. Now a little bit about this EQ, you can activate it on and off, and this is all bypassable here is automatable. You can again choose the presets from the drop down. You can do some side chaining, and you can also adjust the display. For example, Spectrum. I'll show you what I mean here. Let's go to None. Let's go to third octave. It's giving us bands of energy for each frequency. And FFT. And then waterfall. Again, you can see the energy bands by the size and thickness of the indicators here. All right. And high quality will give you a higher quality EQ processing, uh, but with a little bit more CPU usage. So I just keep that on anyway. Now this particular EQ is a seven band EQ here. We've got low cut and everything in between to a high cut. Now there's typically in audio production, there's two, two perspectives when it comes to EQing. Are you being creative with the EQ or are you being corrective? Well, fortunately EQs like this can do both. I'll show you what I mean. If we wanted to sweep out for frequency, what that means is anything you raise above the zero dB line is boosting and bringing down is called cut. So you can boost frequencies or cut frequencies. And when you're working with a bell shape like this, you can adjust the sharpness or the width of that frequency group. Okay. And then you can sweep. Let's do that right now. Let's see if we can find something. There, can you hear that hollow echoey sound? Let's say we wanted to reduce some of that from the recording. Now that we found it, I could take my gain and I can cut it. So here it is with it. And here's without. So let's cut that frequency. A little bit cleaner. And again, you would do this to preference. And another form of corrective EQing is by low cutting and high cutting. If I activate low cut, you'll see we now have a gradual slope. We'll be reducing some of the low end energy and you can adjust that to taste here. Not only with the degree, the amount of where that frequency starts and ends, but the slope. If I want more of a brick wall, for example, I can choose a more sharp curve or a more gradual one. Take a listen. Again, I would suggest listening to this in headphones if you really want to accurately hear this. Now, why would you want to do something like that? Well, for example, let's bring in our bass guitar. Let's let the low end come from the bass guitar and not the acoustic guitar. So by removing some of the low end from the acoustic guitar, those two instruments aren't competing for that same frequency space anymore. Check it out. Here's with the EQ and here's without. Now we'll activate it. So it helps you work within the parameters of these frequencies that we have when, you know, in this case, working with the stereo field and balancing the tonality of your instruments so they blend and work well together and they don't fight for that same space. Now, a form of creative EQing, let's say we activate a high shelf here and let's boost that a little bit, see? We could actually add some high end if we wanted to, or again, below that, we could cut some high end. 
and you've got different degrees of the shelf here, like that. All right, let's hear this. Now, again, this could be considered corrective as well, but I always tend to feel that when you start adding uh, energy to certain frequencies, you're kind of stepping into the creative because you're, you're doing what wasn't originally recorded that way. I guess it's all how you plan on looking at it. It's all perspective, right? Anyway, back to the EQ here. In our final stage, we've got a gain stage. Now, there's auto right here. And with, with this activated, it means it's going to have the same volume coming out as was coming in. Why would you want that? Well, sometimes when you're attenuating frequencies, you're affecting the volume of those frequencies too. And auto will level that out if, it's, if, it, if that works with your mix. Here's without. And here's with it. Without. So as you can see, this included EQ is very powerful and easy to use. So there you go. How to use an EQ in Studio One. My advice is to dive right in, have fun, check it out and kick some tires for yourself. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone and thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Leave your comments below. Like, share and subscribe. Also, don't forget to download that cheat sheet in the description below.